today's scripture text comes from Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to Jesus, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written that God will give the angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, again, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to test. Again, the devil took him to the very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all of their splendor, and said to him, All of these I will give you if you fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only God. And the devil left him, and suddenly the angels came and waited on him. May God add a blessing to this reading. You may be seated. <coughs> Here we are. Here we are at the beginning of this season of Lent once again. With this story of the wilderness and the story of temptation and struggle. If you remember, just a, a bit ago, we read about Jesus and the baptism of Jesus. And then... It was right after that, after Jesus was baptized, that he was sent out by the Spirit to the wilderness. Now, during this wilderness experience, I imagine there were some restless days. And a restless nights and revealing days. I don't know about you, but I, when I go camping, usually that first night, I cannot sleep because I want to listen and I hear all these sounds. What's out there? <laughs> and I think that it, you know, lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. <laughs> so, if you've ever tried to get closer to God, you know the difficult work that was before Jesus. And it's difficult work before us as well. I often wonder why it was called the wilderness experience until I had my own experience called the wilderness. You know, it's kind of like walking the mile in someone else's shoes. We don't get it until it happens to us, usually, you know? Amen. If you've ever gone hiking or ever gone mountain climbing, you know that the trails sometimes are not clearly marked. I, for one, have been off the trails a few times. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> And the trails have these things called switchbacks. Now, switchbacks, they go this direction, and then they come right back in the same direction. The thing is, you're usually going uphill or downhill, depending on the direction that you're going. That's why they're called switchbacks. And not only that, but can you imagine? There are boulders on the trails. Can you believe that? There's boulders on the trails when you go. And there, there, there's dirt. <laughs> there's dirt. And there's bugs. Not to mention.
mention all the other animals in nature. I know one time we went to Yosemite and we were climbing Half Dome and we were up way early in the morning because we wanted to be like the first people to get up there. Well, on the trail up there, we saw a bear. Huh? It was not pretty funny. <laughs> I said, I'm getting ready to throw my lunch pack in the opposite direction, but I'm not running. <laughs> you have to be wise when you're on the trip. I got into thinking, and I wonder if Jesus went willingly. I don't know if he went willingly, but I, what I do know is that he went because the Spirit led him. The Spirit led him. So I believe that there's a lesson for us in this, is that we can go willingly or we can go kicking and screaming. The choice is up to us. The way Matthew tells the story, Jesus experienced not only hunger and loneliness and perhaps doubt, but also temptation. Temptation to relieve his own suffering by turning this bread the stone into bread. And I can imagine the devil whispering in his ears, nobody else will know. <laughs> Nobody's going to know if you turn this little stone into bread. After all, you can do it for yourself, can't you? <laughs> and then by, or by testing God, just to make sure that he heard down by the river was really true. And by grabbing power and glory, even if it cost him loyalty to the one true God, the one whose child he was. What I find intriguing about this experience is that the testing and the temptation didn't come at the beginning of the journey. It came at the end of the journey. It didn't come when he was fresh Right off the baptism, man, I don't know if you, your baptism experience, but mine was pretty good. And, and you know, you get that renewal that you're just, woohoo, I can do it. It didn't happen then. This happened 40 days. As he was in the wilderness, the temptation came. It's at that, when you're at the end, that usually things like this happen. And I don't know about you, but when I'm at the end of my hike, and I'm tired, and I say, gee whiz, I didn't realize the car was parked so far away. Because <laughs> your legs are shaking, <clears throat> and you just feel like you're going to die. <laughs> see, the important thing for us to remember or to see here is that Jesus was ready and didn't give in, possibly because he used his time wisely, these 40 days, this journey, this 40-day journey into the wilderness. He used it to connect with God, getting clarity and getting purpose. Mm -hmm. And he didn't stay in the wilderness either. Hello? All right. He didn't stay in the wilderness. Mm. Now, so many people are more like the Israelites in Moses' day when they kept going around and around and around right. and around the circle. And around. It took them 40 years. Yes, yes. What experts yes. say should have been 14 days. All right, all right. Sadly, many people use the wilderness experience to whine and throw a pity party. All right. Amen. But Jesus took those days. Mm -hmm. And he used them to his advantage. He used this time in the wilderness with God as a retreat. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> and he used this time to become spiritually fed. When I go to the mountains, when I go camping, there's something spiritual about All it. Right. Even amongst the dirt. <laughs> He used this time to commune with God. 
And there's no accidents, I believe, because the scripture is used on this first Sunday of Lent, because this is exactly what we are being challenged to do during these weeks that lead us to Easter. What better way than to connect with God? We are challenged to retreat with God and to get spiritually fed. Mm -hmm. So I want to invite you, encourage you to join us on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock for a Holy Conversations, <coughs> which will lead us through a series of challenges and a series of discussions right. that will help us grow spiritually. Mm -hmm. Holy Conversations. Mm -hmm. The wilderness can be a desolate threatening, and scary place. All right. Especially if you've never been there before. <laughs> and you don't know much about it. And you don't really know how to survive it. It is a testing place, no doubt. No doubt about it. The wilderness, however, is able to make us better. Yes. The wilderness is able to make us wiser. All right. Make, make us more mature. Make us understand things that we never understood before. It has the capacity to bring out the best in us by testing our endurance, our tolerance, our courage, <clears throat> by testing our judgment and even our character. All right. It can also bring about humility, loving and caring attributes as we learn to depend more on God and God's provision for us and not our provision that we try to provide for ourselves. But as we learn God's provisions and how God will provide us with what we need. On the other hand, the wilderness has the capacity to bring out the worst in us, too. All right. Amen? All right. We might feel hopeless. We might feel like we're in despair or we want to quit. And we want to just give up and give up on learning and give up with coping. And we might become selfish or we might be, have a hard heart thinking that the only way that we can survive in the wilderness is to look out for ourselves. Yeah and give up on everybody else. Just me, 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 me. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? That's not God's way. The, this attitude toward the wilderness will lead to our ultimate defeat. Unless we can use the examples of Jesus and Jesus' life to lead us, we would be in trouble. But we have these examples, and I hope we will use this example mm -hmm. to lead us through the wilderness. See, in our lives, we all face wilderness experiences. They may come in many uh, forms of temptation, of tests, of trials, of people putting, pushing your buttons, amen? amen. <laughs> but they come. <clears throat> See, and I believe that we live in this place that's called the world, and the spiritual attitude is a wilderness in today's world. Because it's testing and tempting us to abandon God and abandon the way of the cross. I hear it all the time. How come you follow God? How come you're a Christian? How come, how come, how come? Because this is the way that I know to be true. This is the truth that will set you free. We must not abandon the way. All right. Even in our wilderness experience. As people of faith, we are encouraged to learn how to survive and to live in this spiritual wilderness for a time. Mm -hmm. Like Jesus, we have to come out of the spiritual wilderness. We might not even realize what we need for the physical journey, but I'll tell you what we need to survive for our spiritual journey. We need God. We need God. Yeah. 
We can rely on the gifts and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. If you have a pen, I encourage you to write down a couple of scriptures this morning. Galatians chapter 5. We need the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23 that tells us the fruit of the Spirit. Here they are. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You mean I have to control myself? Absolutely. <laughs> and then we can put on this whole armor of God and use our faith to develop hope All right. and love. While you still have your pins out, Ephesians 6. If you need some spiritual encouragement, I encourage you to read Ephesians 6. Incredible words. He, Paul says, finally, be strong in God. It doesn't say be strong in yourself or be strong in someone else. It says be right. strong in God. Yes, you think yes, Jesus yes. on the mountaintop was strong in himself? No. On the mountaintop in the wilderness, he was strong in God. Yes. He connected there. And in God's mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Right. As you hear the whisper in your ear, what are you doing? You will be able to decipher the clarity of God's voice instead of the voice of the enemy that says, turn this stone into bread. After all, you can do it. <laughs> and then Paul goes on to tell us, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of the evil in the heavenly realms, and then says, Therefore, put on your full armor. This is, how we be, this is how we grow. This is how we make it through the wilderness. We put on our spiritual armor so that you'll be able to stand. You'll be able to stand your ground. In other words, we're not giving up anything. Hallelujah. And then after you've done everything to stand, you stand firm. It enables us, when we put our spiritual armor, to stand our ground, to stand firm. And then it tells us to put on the belt of truth, the buckle around your, your waist, a breath of pain of righteousness, um, have your feet ready with the gospel, have the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and pray. Pray, 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 pray. These are ways in which we get through our wilderness experience. Mm -hmm. See, using these tools, we be able to face any and all of this world's experiences. All the wilderness experiences you could ever throw, we can face. It's always important that we remain faithful even through hardships, even through persecution, we are called to come out of the wilderness experience stronger than when we went in. Yes. We are not called to live in the wilderness. Come on now. It's a process and we ought not to live there. We can come out of the test and we can come out of the temptations. We can come out of the pressures of life with the strength then to do the ministry work that God is challenging us and calling us to do. Let me just say this, saints. Let me just say that many people don't think the church should have a wilderness experience All right. or have a test. Mm -hmm. And when they see that a church or the church is going through this process, it causes them concern. And instead of heading it on with faithfulness and perseverance and with the armor of God, all this other stuff starts happening. Gossip, backbiting, fear takes over. I'm telling you, church, we must rise up and be able to come out of this wilderness experience better than when we went in. And we can do it as we put on this armor. 
And as we allow God and, all, and the faithfulness that God has called us to, to bring us up, to rise us up, to call us out, to bring us forward, so that we can be able to challenge those naysayers of the world. We must press on. And we must be able to grow spiritually in this area and be able to say along the saints, with the saints who have gone before us, it is written. Yes. It is written. All we right. shall have no other All God right. before right. us. Right. So during this Lenten season, I encourage us, because we are given this reassurance that Jesus is with us yes, in our various forms yes, of the wilderness journey, yes, wherever you're at. Yes, he is. That he too had this journey. And the wilderness tempted him and it tested him and he was faithful because he was connected with God. He used the journey to stay connected with God. Yes, yes, yes. And he endured those temptations and tests and so will we. As we stay connected. In yes. fact, it made him stronger. Because right. then he went on and he did the ministry mm -hmm. that God had called him to. Yes. And I would like to say, Valley Ministries, that then we will go on and do the ministry Amen. that God has called us Amen. to. Amen. Because we have been strengthened and we have been prepared mm -hmm. for the ministry and the journey. It is written. Powerful words. Mm -hmm. As we put on God's spiritual armor, I pray that we will be empowered to come out of the wilderness. Yes, Lord. And to seek first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and all of God's righteousness. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen.